Okay, so what's up guys? I'm Pixel Sammy and in this particular video, we are going to review a new camera monitor. This is called the Fortica A50 and it is one of the best budget camera monitors I've ever seen. And just before the review of this particular camera monitor, just let me tell you about the transitions which I used previously in this particular B-rolls for showing this particular monitor. Now these are some of the unreleased Final Cut Pro transitions which I made few days back. So I'm going to release one of them totally free because you guys know in each and every one of my videos I give away one free stuff. So this is a transition which I'm going to give away for free in this particular video. So the download link to this particular transition is there in the link below. And also for those who are using Premiere Pro, I have made a glitch pack. I've also shared a video on that. So I'll just link that as well. You guys can definitely see that one as well. So just going back to a review now. This is called the Fortica A50 and it starts at only $150 and trust me, you can actually compare this particular camera monitor to all the high-end camera monitors. For example, let's take the small HD focus, which is the 5-inch monitor of small HD, which is usually used by professionals. And this particular monitor is also a 5-inch monitor. So the monitor comparison should be like aligned, right? 5-inch versus 5-inch. So let's just compare both of this in terms of specs and all. Now just going back to this particular monitor, this monitor starts at $150 but like all the other monitors from other companies, it has various different kinds of models which you can definitely buy. The first model is the A50 which is the basic version of this particular monitor which starts at $150 and by spending $20 more, you are going to death touchscreen. The next model has 3D LUTs and all those other kind of extra features. And the last model has SDI input and output. Now, some of you guys will not know what SDI in and out is. So SDI in and out is similar to HDMI, but in most cases, it is mostly the higher end cameras which has this SDI input. So for this particular feature, you can actually use this particular monitor to connect to higher end cameras such as the RED, RE, EZ cam, etc. So what is the advantage of the SDI in and output? It is conventionally a lot faster than your traditional HDMI in and output which means that there will be less lag and the data transmission will be much more faster than HDMI. That is what HDI in and output is used for. But I'm sure many of you are not interested in that particular portion, right? You guys are interested in mostly the main monitor portion. So just let me tell you all the points for which this particular monitor stands out. The first one being you can actually add two batteries to this particular monitor, which means longer battery life and it supports mostly all the NPF batteries and also the Canon LPE6 batteries. So coming to the next point, which I feel that at this particular price range, you are getting a full HD display and you can connect 4K display cameras with this particular monitor, which in case of small HD focus, which is like a similar monitor, but used for higher end professionals and cost almost twice or thrice, I must say. And that particular monitor only has around 720p display. Now the third point for this particular monitor is that it has two holes on three sides, which in most other cases, it is only for two sides, one on this side and one on this side. But in this monitor, it has on this side, which is at the bottom side and on either of the sides. So you can actually fit this particular monitor on either of the sides without any hassle. Now there is one more addition which they used for this particular monitor. They actually added some kind of rosettes in front of the screw holes, which means that once you add a tripod or something like that, this particular monitor is not going to move because of the friction caused by the rosettes. Because of that reason, I feel this is one portion, one point, which I feel I should definitely tell you guys because this particular thing is not there in most other camera monitors of this particular price range and also in higher price ranges as well. And now I'm going to tell you guys about the two most important portions for this particular monitor or for any particular monitor which we are going to buy in the future. That is if this particular monitor lasts while I'm recording and the second one being how is the color accuracy for this particular monitor. Now for color accuracy, let me tell you guys, you guys can definitely change the colors, the contrast, brightness and all in the settings. You guys can definitely do that. But I have not changed the colors in the settings. I have kept it at default as it is. And just at default only, I feel the colors are almost accurate and you guys will not be required to change it anyhow. So just going back to the next point, which is if this particular monitor lacks in any kind of connection. Now I am using HDMI connection because I don't have an HDI in or out camera, 
but in my case i am not actually feeling any kind of lag like i'm actually moving my hand right now i'm not actually feeling any kind of lag coming out of this monitor maybe a frame or two maybe few frames but that is like totally negligible and for most of you guys you guys will not definitely notice that particular loss of frames so for this particular price range for actually the costliest one cost around 260 bucks but with all the features which are usually at $800 or $900 camera monitors. So I feel this is one of the monitors which is very underrated and I feel you guys should definitely look out for this particular monitor. The purchase link to this particular monitor is there in the link below as well. So if you guys like this kind of monitor then you guys can definitely check this one out. Now one more point which I forgot to mention is that it has two vents for fan, one at the behind, it has various perforations at the behind which means that your monitor is going to remain cool throughout the place because of the perforations and there is another fan vent at the bottom which actually removes all the hot airs. So there are two fan vents because of which this particular monitor will remain cool or actually tend to remain cool even after a high amount of usage. Okay, so most of you guys will not see or notice anything, but this is me and this is the monitor. This is the monitor. This is my camera. So basically this looks like this. And as you can see, there is particularly no lag. I hope you can see this, but in most cases, there is particularly no lag, absolutely no lag, or you guys will not notice that much lag coming out of this particular camera monitor. So I feel that is enough for you guys to know the technical aspects of this particular monitor. Now I'm going to show some features by taking this monitor and showing some settings it can do, the buttons it has, the kind of on and off buttons, the dials, touch screen, and all the stuff. I'm going to show by zooming in into that particular camera monitor so now i want to just go to the camera monitor portion so the whole screen will be the camera monitor and i'm going to voice over throughout so please make sure to watch the video till the end to understand what this particular monitor is actually capable of okay so now i'm going to turn on the monitor it takes around two to three seconds to turn it on now in order to just show you the settings of this particular monitor i'm not connecting it to any of my cameras because of the fact that it will keep on focusing and refocusing etc. You know to just prevent that, I am just showing you guys the monitor without connecting it to any other monitor. So after that, in this particular scenario, if you drag it from the top, you will see all the settings for all the key buttons which is there on the top. As in there are 7 key buttons which is there on the top. So in the screen you are going to see 7 key buttons. And in my case I am using the touch screen buttons. But if you don't buy the touch screen variant. Then you need to move the dial which is there in the top left hand panel. Right now in this particular area. This is the portion which changes the brightness. Now if you click the dial which is there on the top left hand side. You will see the menu button. You are going to see 5 settings. First one is display which changes the display, the safety marker, center marker, marker thickness, color of the marker, video aspect, and on off fit mode, zoom, freeze, etc. and all those other settings. The second one is the function button or the function menu which is all the functions such as the monochrome function, false colors, focus picking, focus colors, zebras, histogram, audio bar position, color bar, etc. The third one is obviously the LUT which is there for the second variant. So in this particular case you are going to just use a LUT which you are using using the USB Type A which is there in the behind. The fourth menu is the basics menu. This is the menu which contains all the basics for the resolution, color, brightness, contrast or the screen of your monitor. Now I have just kept it at default only but if you guys want to change it you guys can change it. The fifth menu is the system menu which contains all the menus such as the language, transparency, time, touch if the touch is on or off. If you want you can turn off the touch also. There is a fan you can turn it off as well because it will reduce the sound but in return it will just keep it a little bit hotter than usual. There is a volume button, the mute button, reset button, upgrade if you want to upgrade it etc. Now in the top button there are several buttons which you can use. The first button is obviously used for the safety marker as in this one. The second button is the center marker. I usually keep it at on only. 
The third one is the marker mat, which actually keeps the aspect ratios for shooting the videos. The next one is the overscan mode, scan mode, overscan or underscan. The next one is for the backlight. It is basically the backlight for the brightness of your monitor. The first one is used when you want to reduce the backlight and the second button is used when you want to increase the backlight. And the next button shows where you are taking the input from, the STI or the HDMI. Now you can change all the buttons settings by just dragging it from the top and just changing the settings from there or you can just change the settings from the menu button as well and that is pretty much it these are the settings which you can see in this particular monitor so now i am at the ending of this particular video i hope you guys like this particular camera monitor i feel it is very underrated but most of the people who are using it have very good reviews about it because of the low price range and of the high potential it has you are getting a bright screen you are getting two batteries actually the batteries are not included but you are able to apply two batteries to this particular monitor you are getting touch screen you are getting sdi in and output you are getting LUTs, zebras false colors etc now for this particular price range i feel this is the bank for a buck camera monitor which you should definitely look out for the amazon link is there in the description so please make sure to check it out and if you guys like it then do make sure to buy it because i totally recommend buying this particular microphone because at such a low price range i feel you are not going to get anything better so that is pretty much it and this is special sammy peace out